Right, where were we? Ah, yes, we'd built an app for donating the cost of a penguin snack to our local zoo. In the last video, we caused the list of hungry penguin species to be sourced from our backend web service. Now it's time to add an actual credit card payment capability to our app. We're going to do that using the Square in-app payment SDK. We start by going to the pubspec.yaml file and adding a dependency on the Square in-app payments library. For this to compile, we also have to make a change to the android slash app slash build.gradle file. Here, we bump up the minimum Android SDK version to 21. This is the oldest version of the Android SDK that the Square SDK supports. Now we can go to our main code file and add imports for the Square libraries. One line for the main in-app payments library, and one for the models that represent various payment concepts. In order to use the SDK, we need to initialize it with a Square application ID. To get that, we visit the Square developer portal, create an app, and copy its ID. We're using the Sandbox app ID here because we're still in development and we don't want to make actual credit card charges. In our app code, we need to tell the Square SDK about our app ID before we trigger any payment flows. To do that, we add a constructor to the app class. Then we invoke inAppPayments.setSquareApplicationID with the ID. If we try and start the app now, we get an exception about something being accessed before it was initialized. That's because some Flutter infrastructure that the Square Payments SDK relies on hasn't been initialized at the point this class is instantiated. We can fix that by first calling WidgetsFlutterBinding.EnsureInitialized. With this done, we can move on to triggering the Square card payment flow. Down at the end of the file, we have a method for handling taps on penguins. Right now, it just pops up a notification. Let's get rid of this code, and let's instead tell the Square API to start the card entry flow. Now, what arguments does this method need? The documentation says that we need to provide two callback functions, what to do on success, and what to do when the user cancels the flow. Let's just make the compiler happy with some empty lambdas for now. The success callback receives a card details object whereas the cancel callback doesn't get any arguments at all. Okay, let's see if this has worked. We tap on a penguin and there's a square credit card entry screen. So now we know we can kick off the credit card entry flow. Next up, we'll work on using the collected credit card information to attempt to charge. See you soon.